we're going to get a little groovy today. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about planes, but a very specific kind of plane. We're going to talk about joinery planes. So if you think about cutting joinery with hand tools, oftentimes you go to using a back saw and chisels and things like that. Um, but there are planes that can make the task really quick and easy, um, especially if you're doing one of three kinds of, kinds of joints. And we'll talk about those first. Um, so we have the groove, the rabbit, and the dado. Now, there, a dado is a groove across the grain, okay? So you have two shoulders, and you can set a shelf in here if you're building bookshelves. Um, a dado is a really useful joint, but it's, it's in the middle of a board, and it goes across the grain. So a rabbit is on the edge of a board, and it can go with the grain or across the grain. So this is a rabbit. You can picture this like the bottom of a box, and you can nail up into there to secure the bottom. You use rabbits all the time. Um, so again, it can go across the grain, or it can go with the grain. And uh, we'll talk about the differences in the planes that cut those different rabbits in a minute. And then you have a groove. Now, a groove follows with the grain. And uh, again, very useful. You can, uh, like for drawer bottoms, you slide the drawer bottom in that. You put a gro groove in the drawer side. Um, grooves are very useful. Fixed distance here. And uh, again, there are planes to do anything you want with grooves. So let's talk about the planes and what they do. Um, in terms of, you can go like freehand uh, with these planes, or you can get planes that are so extremely jigged that it makes the entire operation completely 100% predictable. On Pi's scale of the workmanship of risk and workmanship of certainty, uh, this plane would be about as certain as you get. So this. Um, <clears throat> this plane cuts a groove at a, uh, this is a plow plane, cuts a groove at a fixed distance to a fixed depth. So you set all those and you basically forget it. And then you can just go and mindlessly cut your, your grooves. And that can be really useful. The other end of the spectrum and the planes that we'll start with are these rabbit planes. So as you can see, you have your iron completely to both edges of the body. And so the body is actually a reference for cutting your rabbits. So if you were to come here and you wanted to cut a rabbit on this board, first of all, you'd want a fence. So you could clamp down a fence on that board, and you would want to score that shoulder, and then you could start cutting with your rabbit plane. Now, there is a problem with this one. So see how the iron is straight across there? This iron is skewed. So a skewed iron is made for going across the grain. A straight iron is going for going with the grain. So obviously, this would not be the ideal plane for this. However, this one would work just fine. It's skewed, and it would eject the shavings out the side. Um, and it does a very good job at just taking up those, uh, the curls of the cross grain shavings. Uh, this, is a, this one is Weight-wise, even though this is like twice the size, this one weighs almost the same amount. This one's like rosewood or something. It's a very nice old uh, rabbit plane. And so basically, uh, for setting these, you, you set the depth and you, you kind of leave it fixed. Um, you don't typically adjust these nearly as much as you do uh, other bench planes like your um, four plane. You, you basically set the wedge, set the iron, and you leave it there. Uh, same with this guy. These are, these are pretty fixed. You don't do too much, um, once you get it dialed in, you don't too, do too much adjusting with the, the rabbit plane. Now, <clears throat> this is another kind of rabbiting plane. You can see there's a little bit more going on here. You've got an adjustable depth stop. You've got this, this is pretty fancy. You've got this little knicker here, which actually, I, as I mentioned before, you have to score the sidewall. With this plane, you don't have to score the sidewall. You can just set this and run it on a fence, except it has its own fence, too. So this is an adjustable fence. So you can, if you're spinning this around, you adjust your fence to go on the edge. And this is a skewed blade, so you can go across the grain. You can also go with the grain with a, a skewed blade. Um, 
So this is a, a moving philister. As I said, it's a type of rabbit plane. Uh, it cuts rabbits of almost any width. This can go uh, like a one inch rabbit and all the way down to you know a tiny sliver of a rabbit if for whatever reason you'd want one of those. Um, but this is really useful in that you have a fence, you have a knicker, you have a depth adjustment, and you can basically set it to do any kind of rabbit that you want. So this is the most jigged of the rabbiting style planes that you can get. So moving on from rabbits to dados. All right, so again, if you're going across the grain, you need to establish your sidewalls. And a lot of times, um, people in our apprenticeship program, we showed them how to do dados using uh, just a back saw, and you cut your curves, and then you can clean out with a chisel, right? You just like that, and you pop out the waste. And that can leave a, a, a good uh, bottom surface. It's a little more irregular, but with these dado planes, you can get a much more regular bottom surface. So a few of the details I'll show you on this bigger one uh, that these planes share. So you have your knickers up here for cutting the sidewall. So as you run it across the board, these first score two lines, which then allows the skewed iron to remove the wood in between. And so each pass goes a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper until you're down to your depth. Now this is an adjustable depth stop. So this will, keep, will let you go down until it bottoms on this. And then you've cut your rabbit, or sorry, your dado to the full depth. And that's adjustable with this little thumb screw that goes up and down. So um, dado planes are extremely useful. If you've tried, um, if you're doing a, like a set of bookshelves and you've done the, uh, the saw kerf or the knife kerf and then clean with a chisel, and then you switch over to one of these with a fence, um, you know, you always want your fence there. You put your fence, you ride this along, zip, 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 and you've got a dado. It's a really slick operation with these planes. So there is another way to clean out dados, and that is with a router. So I'm reclaiming that word. I'm saying these aren't router planes. These are routers. These are actually the real deal router. It's not the big electrical thing that you fire up and it spins at a ridiculously fast speed. These are routers. And so we have two styles here. This is like, uh, this has been called the granny's tooth router. It's basically just an iron down in set to a block. And you have a little relief here that allows your waste to come out. And these are awesome for cleaning out the bottoms of dados and things. You can set your depth. This one's a little too shallow for that dado, but it comes in here and you can just by hand, oh, there we go, got a little engagement. And you can just, clean right out if you want to you basically go bit by bit with these so this one if if i'd start out i want to go let's say i want to go a quarter of an inch deeper i'd start at this depth clean it out all the way across give it a tap tap the wedge and go again until i get to my depth this one um, is pretty slick because it has a screw adjustment and you can set the depth usually i start sitting it there and then you can go here, just lower it down. And then you have two hands. Um, you can steer it. It's a lot of fun to use. Um, so these are routers. These are good for, for cleaning out um, dados or if you have like hinge mortises that you're laying into a door jam or door frame or even a door itself, you can quickly clean out once you've scribed the shoulders of that mortise. Um, but these are great if you can track one of these down. There are a lot of metal bodied versions of these, actually of all these planes, but I'm just talking about the wooden ones. Uh, wood is just so much friendlier and uh, less rust prone, I would say. Uh, so now we're going to uh, another kind of specialized joinery plane. And uh, we would definitely recommend if you can track down a match set of these, uh, to do it. Go on eBay or look at old uh, used tool sites or go to um, tool auctions or uh, swap meets or whatever. Uh, this is a matched tongue and groove set. So uh, you'll find yourself reaching for these often, uh, especially if you build, um, if you want to build a, a tool chest or if you want to build, if you want to lay some pine flooring, you want to cut some tongues and grooves on it. So 
<clears throat> these, again, these are dedicated. Uh, this, they have a fixed fence, and it's a fixed depth. So these cut a very specific kind of joint, right? So these will cut a tongue. This plane here will cut a tongue like that. And this plane here will cut the matching groove. So it's really quite easy. You get started on the far side of a board, and then you work your way back. And you go all the way to the stop, and there's your groove, right? So that it will always be perfect, and it will perfectly match up with the tongue that the plane, the other plane cuts. Um, one thing about having uh, little kids around the shop, Joshua's kids have drawn on our, our scrap wood. We have the word toot, which is a very important word to, to have around and have in your lexicon. But yeah, we got all kinds of sketches around here. Uh, so those are tongue and groove planes. Another really useful thing about these um, is that if you're doing drawer bottoms, uh, these will cut basically the perfect groove, right? So this one cuts a quarter inch groove right in the middle of a one inch board. So if you're doing a drawer bottom, that's kind of ideal, right? So if this is a drawer side, you can cut, I haven't gone to full depth, but you can cut that groove and you're, you're good to go. No adjustment, no thinking, no measuring. That is kind of an ideal setting for um, putting a drawer bottom in. So you can just grab this plane for that too, and we find ourselves doing that quite often. Um, but the other plane that you would use for that, and you can use for quite a few operations, is this guy. This is about the fanciest plow plane we have around here. Uh, this one is from York in England, and it says uh, opposite corn exchange. I have no idea what that's about. But then it also has J. Bland stamped to it. So this is a beautiful plow plane. And you can see some of the things going on here. You have an adjustable depth stop right here. You have this cool ice skate looking um, divider here, which the, um, the iron rests on, and that is uh, to ride in your groove as you're cutting it. And then you have this adjustable fence, which you have these sets of wooden nuts on the inside and outside. You can slide it over. You basically, you'd want to check all the measurements as you're doing this to make sure that the fence is parallel to the body. But you can cut, you know, any depth of groove. A lot of these have um, different irons, so uh, you can get different widths for the groove that you want. You can go uh, right up next to the edge or space it obviously quite far from the edge with this one. Some of them have more adjustability than others. Um, but plow planes are, are quite useful and um, you can use them for a number of different operations. And so, plus they're gorgeous. I mean, that's just beautiful to look at. So even if you don't use it, it's nice to have it sitting in some corner or on some shelf that you can uh, keep an eye on it and uh, look over at it and just admire the lines. You know, it looks, just looks fast. So those are some joinery planes. Uh, they do all kinds of things and they really can simplify and, and speed up the operation of cutting lots of joinery. Uh, so we, we reach for these often here in the shop and uh, get a lot of good use out of them. So if you can track these down, uh, grab yourself a rabbit plane and a dado plane, a matched tongue and groove set, a router, and a plow plane. And uh, you can get all kinds of mileage out of them. And so if you are interested in more content like this, we have the Mortars and Tenon Daily Dispatch that you can sign up for and get stuff every day uh, from the work we're doing around here, tools and construction and furniture building and things like that. So sign up.